Right guys, this is the last um, solo on the Titan this time, because obviously we've done Warlock, we've done Hunter. This will be my last solo for the week on Sunbreaker. Out of the three nades, I think we know it's Fermite Grenade. I think the other two could use a buff. Um, I don't know why Fusion, uh, Fusion Grenades isn't like in D1, where they were, you know, really strong. The single target damage. You know, give, give us options rather than... You know, you've got Fermite, the area effect. You could have Fusion, a, a really powerful single target damage near, but it's not. So, obviously, we're, t we're, we're choosing Fermite with Towering. You don't want, you don't really want to use Rally if you're not confident with this. I'll just use Towering if not. Especially with the strategy we're doing at the end. You need Towering. Strafe lifts the old control jump from day one. It's the fastest out of the three. The other two are situational and you, you never really need. Motor Blast. I mean, we're using Bottom Tree, Code of the Seas Breaker, but we're only using it because of this Nightfall. I'm not a lover of bo of the Bottom Tree. I prefer Top Tree. Some Warriors are a perk of value. Uh, it's actually a really good perk, which I do u utilize at some points throughout, throughout this Nightfall. I also like Soul Invictus, really like that one. I like any health regen perks, so that that's a really good perk. That's the main reason why we're using bottom tree, because we're going to be spamming a lot of nades, so we're going to get our health back. See this diamond in the middle here? Isn't that strange? That's there. It's as if there should be a, a fair tree. What I would like is from the top and bottom tree, I could pick. So say I want to use top tree, say I want to use melting point, but I want soul invectus rather than tempered metal. You know, so then I can mix and match. Why is the diamond? Why is it a diamond in the middle? It's as if there's there's, there's meant to be a cluster there, but they're saving it. That's what it looks like to me. But yeah, I'd rather have that a custom tree there. That would be good. So yeah, I'm kind of like burned out of the Nightfalls solos because of the modifiers. It ain't the Nightfalls themselves. All the Nightfalls that the strikes are really well made. In this game, um, there's you know one or two bad ones, but I'm just sick of the modifiers. It's just the same modifiers. If I go on Destiny One right now, there'll be six or seven modifiers active on the Nightfall. Whereas now we've got two modifiers on Pyramid. Well, I wouldn't even say it's two. I would say it's one. Time warp is not a not a modifier. Time warp. What is it? Timer cannot be extended. That, is, that isn't a modifier. Torrent's one of the best modifiers that they made. Prism's another one. But, you know, they're the only two. You know, Anomalies was interesting when it first came out, and so was the Vex Rings. They were they were good. But the, they're just set. Like the Nightfalls are set. Like Pyramidium, we've never had a Pyramidium we would say Prism. Wouldn't that be, you know, great? And you could offset it with another uh, modifier that's hard. You know, attrition or something, attrition and prism or something. Like, there's just no variety. Let's put not only that. Let's the heroic adventures have all the best modifiers, but nobody plays them. Put them in the nightfalls, because that's what we're playing. That's what people, you know, sign in and play the nightfall, and then the raid. And then if they like crucible, they'll play that, and then that's them for the week. So all them great. Mo there's some fantastic modifiers on the heroic adventures, and they rotate daily. And you're telling me they can't rotate Nightfall modifiers weekly? Like they can rotate an adventure daily. That doesn't sound right. So hopefully on the 26th or the 27th they're going to sort. They're going to make it. They're going to do it properly. Instead of this, because the problem I have is that I know how every Nightfall is going to play out. What weapons to use? What's best? Should I use and be coil? Is Void Walker good this week? Etc. Strike is the one to use for Sabathun. Stuff like that. You know, it's just we know every way. If they all they need to do is just have the modifiers rotating um, every time, and it would change it up. Anyways, 
Uh, these two guys you need to kill before the harpies spawning because they'll flank you from where we're going to set up. I also forgot to mention a part of the build we're using Hollow Fire Heart. And when you combine Hollow Fire Heart, mind your super needs to be charged for it to work, you'll then get instant thermite grenades, just about. If you come behind this wall, the ads and the harpies, they, they, you know, they crowd up, as you can see. So they're crowding up, and it just makes it quicker, rather than running around the map. You're not running around the map, they're all there for you to kill. Make sure you collect all, as many rockets as you can. There should be plenty. We should know as we go in. Two to two and a half minutes is a half decent time of coming out and out of here. In less than two minutes you're doing well. Really well. This next section is two two ways to get through it. Two quick ways. You can sparrow right down the middle, but you'd have to be careful with the ads because the ads are shooting at you, so you've got to avoid that. Or you can take this route that is safer. Right about the in here. Just take a bit more to master. Because it's Don't easy. It's, it's not as easy as you think. You've got to we'll learn to control your sparrow on that ramp. But once, you, once you're good at that. Do the ramp all the time. I do the ramp all the time now. We, I think it's quicker as well. That's just me anyway. So now we've got our supercharge. So that's Sunfire Furnace. It's procced. You'll see, you'll get, I think it's like, when second and a half cooldown or something like that. Like a now second and a half, nearly two seconds, so it's, the time you threw a nade, you've nearly got one ready to go. Now, when you have some warrior procced on top of it, it's even quicker. As you see, I was standing in the flames, I was killed by Vex. So I killed Vex with, I was obviously standing in utilizing, sometimes... I'll utilize it, sometimes I don't. It's not necessary, you don't have to, but just part of knowing how the sunspots work. But with this section, I usually work left to right. So there's a major on the left, Zachalite's in mid, and there's two majors on the right. So let's work left to right with it take out the sniper and then spawn trap this guy with nades and he's easy to go this section can be dangerous if you don't apply yourself so pre-nade rocket right side then rocket middle as well, while nading in between. You want that wizard down as quick as you can. Once you've done that, watch the knight, because he'll flank you with his flames as well sometimes. But once you've done all that, take that knight out, and then you've all you've got left is some acolytes. That's it. That's how to safely deal with that bit. You can be more aggressive than that, definitely. You have the two snipers at the back. Try and leave one sniper up so that you can spawn trap the ads. The next section of ads. I tried to set up some warrior there, it didn't work for some reason. Why it didn't work, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Just keep nading. Obviously, I've got a couple of rockets back there that I haven't picked up, so I, f I figured, yeah, I can use a good couple of rockets. You don't want to be using all six. So especially when you've got instant grenades, it's just a waste. You know, use two or three. You could you you can get away with not using any. I only got five there, so I should have went back and got a rocket, but it's here or there, it doesn't really matter. There's three mages in the next section. On this class it doesn't matter. Other classes maybe yeah. You want to go on back and get the six. 
Sandy to get the seat at each Those section. Because of, of how instant your nades are, it's, you can do the whole thing no guns. Which I certainly could do, but I just wanted a flawless. I just wanted a flawless and done pretty quick in terms of like time. So we are. I am going to be speed running it with two others today. I'm going to try and get our the best time we can. And the the world record is 606. So if we can get anywhere near that, I mean I don't know how. I'm not saying we'll beat it by any means, but. We'll certainly see how quick we can get it today. That major on the left sometimes can be annoying if he's tethered. But that time he was okay. Try and spawn kill these ads as quick as you can. It's a lot. Yep, there's a lot of spawn killing in this. The better you are at spawn killing, the, the quicker you, you are and the easier it'll be for you as well. Best just to stay back and nade, nade that major, he can be annoying, all the majors can be, well not the majors, the knights, should I say. The quick, the best way to get the plates would be top, the one I just got, then this one and then the one in front of me. There's a reason for that, this guy needs to be rocketed, definitely rocket him, and then barricade, as that will happen and you could die. I should have barricaded there. finish off these guys and you can get the last plate easy done if you're coming out with 14 minutes plus here then you're on a good really really good time but it's not so time intensive on the sunbreaker just because of how the boss fight goes and normal isn't time intensive anyways prestige is prestige is very much so time intensive here I'll patch him in this section, I like to kill the Vex in front of the Wizard, the Knight, and then run through. The Vex to your right aren't dangerous, and you don't need to kill them, really. Kind of use his block as cover. The Knight's the most dangerous thing there, like... Once he's down, you know, you can run through. Space. If the taken, not shoot a kill out phalanx before you get to the end if you don't he will he'll barge you back into the lasers and kill you definitely okay so this is the tower section probably the most annoying room I wouldn't say the hardest because it, it ain't hard so to speak but I think it's the most annoying sometimes but what I'm trying to do here is get the orange bar phalanxes right at the back. Some, they won't always stand like that, but if they do, I like to get damage in on them. Because sometimes they won't push up. You'll see what I mean when I get to this next bit. Take out both snipers, push up a bit. Don't push up too far. If you push up too far, you'll spawn in the next lot of ads, which you don't want. Unless you're in position and ready for it. Because, again, we're going to spawn kill a lot of ads. You, you don't want to go much further than where that phalanx is. I think where that phalanx is is the cutoff point for where the ads spawn in. Just need the top platform. Obviously, the, the, those phalanxes down below need to be killed as well. Once it's clear then push up. There's obviously going to be a lot of rockets on the floor for you, so you can use a couple of rockets. Try and spawn kill them like that. Two nades in a rocket and then get the snipers down as quick as you can, because they'll get tethered if, if you take your time. And once that's done, back up, get some more rockets and work on the right and left towers. 
I like to rocket rocket each uh, tower because they can be annoying, especially the left one because there's that block in front of you, in front of the tower, and the the ads will hide, the minotaur will hide, and once it's pretty clear, you can push up. Now I left the bottom tower. The reason for that. So get once you've got the first tower that you'll have already got, get the left and right, top left, top right. Because what you're doing here is that the major will spawn in at the very back. We'd never kill him. He's not worth the time investment to kill. You don't need to kill him. So he spawns once you're scanning the third tower. And obviously there's one more tower to scan which is down below which is the safest. So you can wait under there, wait for the towers to finish and then you can run through. Easy. According to my projection, I would say you don't need nowhere near 9 minutes or 9.5 minutes for this boss. Nowhere near. No lake, just you could kill this there. boss in six minutes, but well, it would have to be a, a quick. You'd have to be very good and quick. Um. So yeah, don't rush the boss fight. So it's just us and a massive vex game. If you're new to it, don't don't rush it. So just uh, start nading because Fermite lasts so long. pre nade to get more damage output on him. He's immune for quite some time, but no need to use any rockets at this section. Don't use any, because no matter what, you're going to do the same damage. Whether you needed him 20 times or done a rocket and needed him 19 times, it's it. There's like a cut-off point with it, so you you best off just saving. Shoot, utilize your barricades on plates like that. And then when the next lot of ads are spawning in, try and spawn kill them as well. You need. They will hide behind that block if you're standing where I am. If they're still hiding, you can push up to this section here and it'll stop. The ads will then, they'll then confront you. Should have really popped a barricade there, but if you stand here, it's an, you get an angle on him, and he'll try to shoot you, but he can't because he's just hitting that block in front. As soon as the portal is activated, come to this place here. Basically, you'll confuse the boss, and he'll try and stomp you over and over. He'll try and snipe you here and there as well, mind. You gotta be careful, but duck and come to this wall. Just keep nading him. Fermites do and a bit RNG. Sometimes they'll miss him if you hit him with it. Not as good, say, say vortex or or pulse or solar. They still work on that bit. Try and nade him in between phases like that. If you ever struggle with the next two plates, especially the one that we're coming to, stand here, the safest section on the map. I didn't need to do this, I could have just stood on the plate and done a barricade, but... I just didn't want to die, I just wanted to get shot at them. Um, felt like I'm pushed for time by any means. That way you can collect the plate safely. Hug this wall to your left as well and you're safe. Nade going to cover, nade going to cover. That's all it is to that. See like so that I'm really low health so wait until your health regens and then push. Because if you didn't red and he snipes you, you're definitely dead. So this is the last plate. Come to this section again. Damn strat. 
Nee, there's much as you can. Now, it's definitely worth your while to start using rockets now. You want to get his health low, pretty low. You'll spawn over here, he's vulnerable to a rocket. Right there. I didn't get the damage skip on him, which I was kind of like, yeah, that should have been... He should have went to middle. He does go to middle now, like... So now this portion of fight, we're skipping, basically. In a way. Obviously, you're still killing ads, but... You're not doing the fight like you would do on, say, a Warlock, where you do it through its entirety. So you, in this section, my barricades aren't the best there. Even I can say that. Try and have a barricade on your left and, and have one on your right. Always look at your, your barricade recharge rate while you're while you're doing this. I have a barricade up. I should have been popping one right now. But I'm quite safe, so... Also, I've got plenty of rockets, so I'm trying to get him down. As quick as I can, because what you'll find with this, the longer this fight goes on, the worse it'll get. Unless you're efficient with killing your ads. If you're just trying to hit the boss and the ads overwhelm you, it's, it's really bad. Sunbreaker excels on this section because you can get your health back. And look at this, I'm one shot. I've got health back. You can use the ads to leverage. Right now, I'm not really focused on the boss because I've done a lot of damage to him. I have one more rocket. When, he's, when you break his head off, which isn't far away, that's when you need to be cautious of him. Notice I'm missing my nade, so I'm jumping up a little bit higher, and then there we go, getting some damage. Now I've broken his head off. Try and be cautious, I'm weak, so... Pop your super because you'll get 10 hammers. 10 hammers is more than enough to finish him. Obviously as well, stay behind your barricade because he'll stomp you but he can't kill you. If you're in your super like that. So don't mess around with him when he's in that state. That's the most dangerous part. But if you're smart about it, pop your super then it's fine. Yeah, that's my uh, Sunbreaker solo. Um, like I say, I'll be doing some speed runs today, but that's it. That's the last solo, basically. But anyways, thanks, people, for watching. Those that do. Thank you.